the board this bowl game? Very much so. Uh, been very fortunate in my 20 years of coaching, whether it be in GA or whatever, I've been able to partake in 14 of them. So uh, as a coach, you get very spoiled. Um, you, you, uh, I mean, it's, it's nice to be able to plan that this has been, me and my family, they know that Christmas is going to be around some kind of a bowl game. I mean, we have to plan our travel around where we're going to be. So we never know where we're going to be for Christmas. Sometimes we're in a hotel. I mean, when I was uh, GA, I had to steal the Christmas tree from down the, in the lobby so that our, the, I mean, all that good stuff. So you, you never know what you're going to have to plan for. So you always have to make adjustments. Uh, we're we're going we're to be home, so we won't need to, we, for Christmas, and with that one, we won't have to, we won't have to do it this game, uh, so it'll be good. Is there any way to overstate the benefits of young players playing in the bowl No. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it used to be you only get 15 practices. Um, now, with the, with the championship game being so far away and, and uh, stuff, I mean, you could practice 40 times if you don't play until the, the first week of January, but with the situation that our program is right now, um, the, the practices that we've partaken in so far has been great. Um, we don't have a lot of young guys to develop because on our side of the ball, they're all playing. So they're getting developed on Saturdays, which is, I mean, you can't, you can't, uh, there's nothing that replaces that experience that those guys are getting. So the seven practices that we have before we play will be good. We've had an opportunity in all of them. I mean, normally you don't necessarily scheme for the whole time. Um, we've had a luxury since it's, it's almost like a bye week. I mean, we're, we get an extra week because we didn't play in a championship game, unfortunately, but they did. So it's literally like a bye week for them. So um, the, the developmental for those guys, it's, it's been good. And we've got a lot of young guys that on offense, I mean, they, they took a couple of the scout team receivers today. I mean, we had an injury in practice with Ryan yesterday, so they needed some extra bodies. So we're a little bit depleted for the, for the development part of it, but it is, it's, it's so valuable. It's, um, it's almost an additional spring practice if you have the players to do it right. And by the time we get to 2021, I plan on being in a bowl game. So we'll have that chance. It'll be a great opportunity to develop them. How much of a defense where you've got two freshmen that are leaders? It's their defense. You've talked about that all along. How unusual is it? Very. It's often too much to ask of those guys. Um, especially, I mean, it's different when they're redshirt freshmen and they've been in your program for a year and a half. When you got guys that are walking off the street, I mean, Merlin and those and, and Darian and Nashari, I mean, more so Merlin and Darian have been the vocal point on our team on defense. I mean, those guys were planning on going to the prom six months ago. I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's unbelievable what we've asked them to do, but more so that they've been able to do it. And uh, they're special. They're, they're special, and and I'm I'm super glad we have them. Um, no, I think we were a little bit prepared for it because going through spring practice, we saw where we were deficient. We knew, um, now you, as a coach, you're making a huge mistake if you ever plan on a true freshman coming in and playing and having an impact. I mean, that's, it, it's, it's often too much to ask. So we knew those guys were going to have to play. I had no idea we were going to put as much pressure and, and ask them to do as much as we did. And if you would have asked me that question in last April, after we spent, finished spring ball, what the impact those guys were going to have, I would have told you, uh, hopefully they can play. If, if, I, if you would have told me that those guys are going to be the leader of your defense, I would have said we're not going to be very good at all. And I don't think we'd be in a bowl game. So give them, give them a lot of credit because it, we asked them to do a lot and they did it. Well, I think it's helped tremendously. Uh, those guys, uh, we're getting phone calls from people, um, kids that that uh, they they see the opportunities that are that are here. They see how well those guys are playing, and that we're not afraid to play those guys. And so we've had a couple of, of ex teammates of guys call and say, "Hey, can you can you pass me on to the coaches so that we can get them? been some good players? I mean, there there's people that are being recruited by top five programs in the country that are calling to see if we can make room for them." That's a good problem. Do you feel that, like, I'm not saying that you like coaches in programs a lot, but you always hear players say certain things in recruiting, like, oh, they said I would have a chance to play as a freshman if I competed, and they felt they competed and didn't have that chance. Do you feel that putting that up on the field and delivering that message kind of even sparks a better play from that? 
Absolutely. I mean, uh, we tell everybody in recruiting and in our program, we're going to play the best players. It does not matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a true freshman. It doesn't matter if you're a walk-on. I don't care. I want good football players that practice hard, compete, and make plays. I mean, it's effort, assignment, and make plays. Those are our three criteria in order for you, that really for any football player to be a good football player. You have to play with effort. You have to know what you're doing and be able to make plays. And, and then you have a chance. Effort, assignment, make plays. And those guys, we preach it. We preach it in recruiting. But I mean, our best recruiters, we, we often give the coaches way too much credit. Our best recruiters are our players. When those guys come into town on official visits and they spend time with the kids, that's, that's when those guys get recruited and they decide whether or not they want to come. Because those guys will come back to us and they'll tell us, Coach, that guy's he don't fit in. We'll stop recruiting them. Don't care how good a player they are. If the kids don't like them, we ain't recruiting them. And those are our best recruiters. So yeah, I think it has a, a great impact. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be really, really cool. I mean, uh, the team bonding part of it, I think we're taking six of them, so it's going to look like a whole caravan. I mean, with all of them, we're going to make a couple stops. Uh, Coach Edward, I think it's a great idea. Um, it's not very far. I mean, six hours. Uh, we're going to stop in Kingman. I think we're going to go to Five Guys and eat burgers, and there's a 31 flavors next door. I mean, Coach Edwards knows his way around a milkshake, so we'll have to follow him and, and see. And then uh, we're going to stop at the dam. I, I mean, there's a bunch of guys on our team that have never seen Hoover Dam, and that's a really cool deal. And then we're going to go see the stadium as soon as we get there so they can get a feel for it, and then uh, we can plan out for the week. But I think it's a, I think it's a great. It'll be a really fun deal. I think How tremendous. Solid, solid I think uh, it's I think it's the strongest that ASU the, the ASU brand has been in Southern California in a long time, because I I recruited Southern California my whole time at San Diego State, and also in New Mexico, and uh, in the Inland Empire. I mean I, I think I ran into ASU a couple times. That ain't that ain't that ain't very many. And now the ASU brand is all over the place. And we're doing some different things in recruiting. That's putting it out there even more. I mean, uh, if you watch all our, our Ignite episodes, I mean, Coach Pierce and Coach Simon, those guys are having a whole bunch of fun. But they, they do a good job with the, with the kids. And the kids see that, and they put it all over social media. I mean, we, we went to a couple high schools uh, last week, and we roll up, and there's, there's eight coaches. You get out of the car, there's a freaking drone fall. I mean, it, it's getting ridiculous what we're doing. <laughs> Okay, I mean, yeah, and, and, and but the, the kids are talking, and, and the, the LA schools, and they're, they notice, they know we're there, so it's good. What's your relationship like with your other coaches? Great. Um, shoot up those Ignite videos. I mean, every here they come. I mean, there was one afternoon, me and Coach uh, Likens and, and Coach Edwards were in the car, and I just saw some videos that they were showing the other day. Goodness gracious! Oh, we get to edit it before and shit goes out there before the stuff. And so we're having just conversations about nothing. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a great atmosphere. Um, Coach Edwards, it's a family atmosphere. I mean, our kids are always around. Uh, you couldn't ask for a better work environment. It's productive, and it's it's quality over quantity. I mean, we are here. We're efficient. We get the job done. And and I mean, there's kids around. The families are around. I mean, it's the the camaraderie amongst the staff is is really really good. I, we all, yeah, yeah, I mean, you have visions of where you want to go, where you want to be. Um, I think we've done an okay job uh, establishing what we want to be. We're not to what we want to be yet. Um, I think we got a little bit of a, probably, I don't want to say a setback, but I mean, the amount of development that we could have had if you had a couple of older guys that have been through a year in a weight program. I, that, that is so invaluable, I mean, so valuable just the weight room. I mean, it's it's different than when you lift in high school. You're with a full-time strength coach who has five or six assistants, and then what we're trying to establish around here is a competitive environment that 
everything you do, you compete. So when a guy sees a guy not do what he's supposed to do in the weight room, they jump all over him. And when you get that, then you have a chance to be special. When you've got a bunch of guys that he sees a guy do five reps when they're supposed to do eight and he kind of looks away, you're in trouble. And we've got enough guys down there. And I, I spend, I mean, I think as a coach, okay, and I learned this a long time ago, the more you're around the guys, the more you know about them, the more you know about what's going on in your program. And if they're comfortable with you being around, they don't become guarded. They don't hide stuff. They don't talk. They, they just, you're just around. They just, it's, it becomes normal everyday banter. And so you can, you can avoid a lot of bad things. I mean, you can hear some stuff going on and then you don't, you don't call them out. You walk to the side and say, hey, what, what's this all about? And, and you can address those things. You have to be around the kids. If, if you have a division of staff and players, you're asking for trouble. And I think we've got a lot of that and that, that helps. So where we're, where we're going to where we're been, uh, I mean, we're, we're coming where we're from. We've still got a long way to go, but the building blocks and the foundation are all in the right places to be very successful. How much input do you get from him on Saturdays on game day? As far as what? Just what he's telling you, what he wants to see you do on defense, and how does he um, He's been great. I mean, he he uh, defensive the lot. I mean, coach coach has so much experience just in the within the game. Um, schematically, he hasn't. Uh, What's, what's the right word? I mean, he's he's been super supportive in everything we've done, and uh, on those headsets on Saturday, yes, yeah, we we talk the whole game. I mean, he, most of the time when I'm when we're on defense, he's kind of monitoring and seeing what's going on and listening in the background, and then between series we'll talk. When the offense is on, is when we're talking, and then when uh, when we're up on defense, he'll talk to Coach Likens and those guys and kind of let them know what's going on. Um, we talk constantly situational. I mean, the entire game back and forth. Hey, he, um, he asked a lot of questions. What do you think here? I mean, are we playing good enough on here to go for it on this fourth down? Field position wise, what are you thinking here? Um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think we've got a really good relationship that way. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. Uh huh. Unbelievable. Uh, he never he never changes as far as um, I mean you see what you see it's every day it's all the time it's 24 hours a day I mean he does when he says he gets in here at 4:30 it's every morning I mean I've come a couple times just to see if he's here he's here I wanted I wanted to call him and be like ah you were nope his car's here so then I pull up I'm like goodness gracious so in the room in the house parents are really comfortable with him they know who he is most of them grew up watching him. Grandparents know who he is because they were older when their kids were, were playing. They're, they're the same age, so they know who he is. Um, the the star status of Coach Edwards is unbelievable. That is, you know, you, you talk about people being famous and all that stuff. That's a life I would never want to live because it's unbelievable. We we go to the airport to go to these recruiting trips, and I always tell. I mean, I'm I'm one of those people. You get to the airport. And it drives my wife crazy because I'm like, ah, A-list, sorry, excuse me. I, I mean, it, my flight leaves in five minutes. Anybody want to help me out? And it's, that's what, that's, I mean, I don't, like, I don't like airports waiting and stuff like that. He, you, when you go with Coach Edwards, you better plan an extra hour. So that two hours, you better be there two hours in advance because an hour of it's going to be shaking hands and pictures. And it, it's unbelievable. And, and he is, he's got that smile and he always looks at him. It's awesome. And so when you get in the home, they, they connect with him. He's direct. They know what we're trying to build. And we've done, we've taken a different approach. We're, we're doing kind of what we call this caravan recruiting, where we're taking eight, nine coaches into a house, which can be a little bit intimidating. He makes it very comfortable because that could really backfire in a lot of situations. If you go in there with a very aggressive approach, you're going to make people feel very uncomfortable. And Coach Edwards, um, it's a very, relaxed atmosphere where they can be themselves and talk and have fun and hang out and he's been unbelievable now I've been in a couple of one-on-ones with him just in the what it's just me and him in the house also and he tells them I mean, it's it's just refreshing because they see what he what he is on TV they see what he is on the sideline they see what he is when they come to practice he doesn't change he never wavers so they know what they're gonna get they're not gonna get a circus act they're not gonna get this it's it's really good
Yes. All around. I mean, it, we, we've gone to a couple of places, it's 25, 30 deep. And they just, they just, they want to shake his hand and get a picture. And he's got that perfect smile. I mean, I, I tease him all the time, like, man, how long did it take you to practice that? I mean, it's, it's perfect. Every time he knows it, it's, uh, it's fun being around him. It's, it's super fun. He does a great job. I was a big proponent talking to coach uh, when we start when we plan the schedule out of doing it this way. I've done it this way pretty much my whole career. Um, I thought it was a little bit harder last year. Now last year we kind of had to because we're trying to teach coaches the system. We're trying to install with the players so you can take as much time. Now that during the week you have the eight-hour mandatory rule all year long, where you can actually put them in the classroom, you can take advantage of that time and actually teach before you get into spring ball. Before you couldn't do that. So I thought it was really important last year, the timing, we did a pretty good job. It's hard when you go spring ball right into spring recruiting, especially if you get somebody hurt. Um, they lose a whole month. I mean, we're going to gain a month in order for them to, uh, if, they get, if somebody gets hurt, so you can be a little bit more aggressive in spring ball. We need to scrimmage and play more physical football around here so that we get good at what we want to do. I mean, you can't talk about being physical football and not do it. I mean, we can say it until we're blue in the face and – it doesn't matter. They've got to play. The, the only way you get good at doing something is to actually do it. So we're going to scrimmage, and, and that's not the, the NFL model, so that's been hard for Coach. He's been awesome lately. I mean, it, for, during the first spring, some of our scrimmages, it was really frustrating to me, and, and he'd be like, Coach, we got, we're good. We're going to – you can't. He, but as we've seen that we need to develop these guys more and more and more, it's been a really good approach. So that gives you that opportunity. The other part of it that I love – as I talked about earlier, the weight program, we're going to get a solid 12-week cycle with Coach Connolly in the weight program. They're going to get some time off. They'll get spring break off. They'll get a little bit of time off before their summer school session start, starts. And then we get another 12-week block in the summer. Those time, that time in the weight room is so valuable, especially for a young group, especially for a young group to start as six true freshmen at times. It's... I mean, if you want to be a mean, physical, nasty team, you have to be strong and physical and you have to. And I think part of the way we do things around here, the reason that we are competitive in the fourth quarter and we always have a shot and nobody ever quits is because everything we do, we compete in the weight room where Coach Connolly has them. They are competing. I mean, they break up in the teams and they compete, compete, compete. They go out and run. We compete. We go out and do individual drills. There's some kind of competition. We bring them into the classroom. We compete. Well, I mean, we can play goldfish if we want to. I mean, it, crazy eights. It doesn't matter. We're going to compete in everything we do. And then that's just what they know. So they always want to, they always want to win. Also, with doing spring practice that early, I mean, like you said, just said, starting the six freshmen, you get a bowl game, semester break, a little bit of time off. But to get that on film early to compare where they were to, how big of an asset is that? It, it's good. I mean, what the other part, you know, the, the thing that going, we're going to start the week of signing week which is a little bit earlier than we've done, but I think it's, it's gonna work out really good. What we'll lose is a little bit of, uh, because we'll be out on the road recruiting up until we start the day of spring practice, we won't have as much time together as a staff to self, self-evaluate what we did last fall and what's, what will work and what will not. And then you have to develop your, your best 22 players in the spring I'll sit back now over the next month, and it'll be really good during the time off. I mean, it'll drive my wife crazy, but I'll be watching to see, okay, who are our best players going to be going into the spring? We're a 335 by number, but that doesn't mean we're going to be a 335 in the spring and in the fall. And what we do in the fall, we're going to do so much developing individual fundamentals, and they're going to run and run. They're going to run like they've never run before. And they thought last spring was tough. They have no idea what they're in for. They got a little taste of it last week. Like I said, I can't wait because February is one of my time. I mean, spring ball, spring ball is fun to me because it's football. There's no pressure to beat anybody, so you don't have that same stress to win games, so you get to actually play good football. And if we scrimmage every opportunity we get as a player, I mean, that's why you play the game. The guys we want should want to scrimmage every time. Now, by rule, you can't. But if you want to be mean and nasty and violent and you want to just drive people into the ground, you have to do it. So I just can't wait. Time for one more than one has one. What do you think those 22 that's too deep? 
Yes, two deep at each position. So we'll go through and we'll see. And like I said, you can't count on true freshmen coming in and playing. Unfortunately, we're going to have to have some more true freshmen in our two deep next year. Because, I mean, if you look, the scary thing about going into spring ball, we're going to have like 25 guys to practice on defense that will actually play next year because we have so many true freshmen coming in next year that will be a part of us. Um, we've got enough depth now that or we will have enough depth that those guys shouldn't have the major role. I mean, if we can find somebody that's going to come in and beat out Merlin and Darian, then my goodness, I'll be the best coach in America. Okay? We ain't going to find that. So, uh, so we got to keep developing those guys so that they have that chance to be special. And we want to we want to out recruit those guys. Trust me, we're going to try and find those guys because, and I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. You're only a good coach if you have good players. Coaches don't win games. Players win games. Coaches can screw them up. And I'll do everything in my freaking everything possible to make sure we give them the best plan schematically to win games. I'll spend 24 hours a day if I have to to make sure that we're lined up right so that the numbers match up so that every, op every snap on the ball, we have a chance to be successful. And then if you get good players, you'll be great. And that's what we want to be. We want to be great around here. So we'll make it happen.